Hello and welcome to part six of Cedar Cove. And this is the end. Part six is all we get on this one, which is quite a lot. So it took us twice as long as doing our regular paintings to do this 18 by uh, 24. So for those of you that have hung in there with me, congratulations. This has been a long haul. And finally, look at this thing, and I even have a frame for it. And it looks really good, particularly in a frame. Uh, my students always say, if you put it in the frame, you're cheating when you get a critique because it looks so much better. And yeah, presentation is important. So, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. So, let's get to finishing this painting. Thanks again for hanging in there. All right, bye-bye. Hey, here we are. Part six, and I hope this is going to be our last one. I know we're not going to get all the small details in, but I want to show you how to look for small details and how to get them in your painting. I think that's the big key. As you can see, I got an assortment of small brushes. Basically, I have a thing called a comber or a rigger. I'm sorry, a rigger. And it's a rigger 273. It's a number zero. And I guess the next one I've got that looks like something is a number two rosemary. Long Flat Series 279. These other guys are so worn out, I call them three hair brushes because they're so worn down. And, um, but one is a number one Rosemary Long Flat Series 278. Okay, those are probably the three that I'm going to use most today. And um, taking a drink of my water. Make sure I have my paper towels, my paints are laid out. Pretty much I have everything I think I need. So what I want to look at is squint down and I think that I need some lights in here. I need to thin out this, um, this trunk here. And um, I need to get more darks in this tree. But I need to start getting some little darks uh, at the base of some of these greens down here. So I'm going to start building that and um, going from there. But first, let's start with something I need to do that I did right after we finished yesterday. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a dark blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, transparent oxide brown. And what I did with a smaller brush is I wanted to kind of make a little cliff down here where there was a drop off and then it went flat again. So that means I'm going to have to need to get some lights down there too. But I think that makes a nice statement down there. All right, let's get to redesigning this stuff here a little bit. I think I'm going to start with my number two and I'm going to make a light mixture. Let me get these brushes out of the way. Get some white. So that's Naples and transparent oxide. Red. Too much. Jeez. Too much. There we go. We have a nice light color here. Let me get some Naples in there. I think we're ready to apply some paint. This is where it takes a lot of observation. Look what's really going on in that painting in the small details. So I want to make some brushes or some limbs here. So I'm going to This guy a little shorter. And see how that made that guy look a little bit more a little thinner right there. Good. Maybe a little bright. Let me get a little bit of calm it down just a little bit with some green. Just a little too bright. Let's 
sky holes don't hurt either. And I'll put a few light sky holes up in here too. I call them sky holes, but they're just background holes with the light coming through. And now, let me get some more darks on the left side of this painting here. I'm going to get a little bit more viridian in there and some raw sienna, raw sienna, raw sienna again. And I think there's some serious darks right along the top of the rock here. Here, let me see if I can carve out some trunks here. Just by going in here. I think I get a smaller brush to do that. And And I made that a little too bright. Every time I try to match the background color to inside the bush, it's too bright. So sometimes you have to bring sky holes a little darker than what the surrounding color is. And I will... do that. And I will do some of that over in here. good dark right in here. Already making this dark a little darker with some transparent oxide brown and some ultra and some alizarin. And now I'm going to do some Viridian and some raw sienna. Kind of the bush color. More of this green and a little bit of white. Makes a nice green. And I see some lights coming across here in these foreground trees. I want to use a lighter green. The nice thing about small brushes, they're easy to clean. Alright, let's go back to my number two. I'm back on my number two long flat 279. I want to make a lighter green. So I see that in here. And I want to put that down in this area here. And I want to bring in some of this warmer color.
and maybe some transparent oxide red within this area here. Add a little orange to that. It looks like maybe the bank is receded there, so I've kind of brought my lights back in here. Let me see if that, I redesigned that corner and I'll see if it works. Not too bad. And we get some lights right in here. Basically, I'm redesigning this area here because it just looked a little too contrived, even though I was following it along quite closely. Let me lighten this up just a little bit up in here. Okay. And I'm lightening one side of this guy here. Now remember I said I need some little darks up above and here, and these little rocks I see are little bases of little bushes. So I'm going to get this little three hair brush, which was once a number one rosemary 278. And I'm going to start working on some darks, dabbing them in here at the base of some of these areas here. And again, I'm just using the side of my brush to and see how that just adds like little steps in there. And if it's too much, just lighten it up just a little bit, like I did right there. I see some of these little darks over in here also. some shadows. Let's go with blue. Blue Ultra. I'm going to add some of the warm color to it to dull it down just a little. And get some, some blues in here where the bases are. Pushing my luck, let me tell you, and I'm enjoying it. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's get some of the shadow over in here. Let's get some warm in there. It's a little too blue. Okay. And we could use some over in here, too. See, is it necessary for impressionistic painters to use the side of the brush? I don't know, but I certainly use the side of mine quite a bit. That was a little too contrived. Let me darken that up. The question is, do you want to have warm light on top of this rock right here? I like the red, but it's... Let's try out some of this light on there, too. I think that last stroke spoiled it, so I'm going to have to kill that with a little bit of red. And let's go back to some light down here. And here. I 
Let's go back to darks. Transparent oxide brown, blue, and there's some good darks in here. And I want to get them back. There I was overusing a brush. There was nothing left in it, but I kept squeezing it. I think there's a big silvery on um, bush right here. Let's work that in. So let's go some light gray, white. It's had a little pink to it. Little alizarin. <laughs> Sorry. Alizarin. Silver. And white. And it goes over here also, but it has kind of a greeny dark base, so let me work that in a little bit. And maybe go a little darker. Blue transparent oxide brown. And let's go back to lighting the top some more. And get some silvery green in there. So I want gray, white, and green. Let's make a big area here where the tree is kind of sneaking through here also. There's some silver up in this guy here. These would be darker. Get some green in there too. I am just messing this up tremendously. Let's go back to gray. I just mixed in some dark gray. I sure messed that up, didn't I? And we'll go back to mixing some nice green again. So I'm mixing raw sienna. Green. And a little transparent oxide brown. And let's kill some of this gray here. And that might be all we need in there for that. And we'll get some of the basic green back. dark coming down from this tree right here. And this kind of goes up. There we go. Following What I did there was just follow a shadow line that was very distinct. I don't know why I didn't pick up on it before. And let's go back and work on shadows some more. Sorry for the background noise. It looks like there's been an accident up the canyon. And we have emergency vehicles going up the canyon.
All right, let me get back. I'm not satisfied with being done up here. I'm going to expand some of this. Sorry for my back on here, but I want to work up in here a little bit more. There's more going on up here, and I want to tune myself into it. And I see a little bit lighter gray, kind of a green gray. Up in the mountain. Or, I'm sorry, the cliff. The cliff. And we have a little orange. Orange, a little gray. Orange, a little gray. Just going around and finding places to where light might be. And I know there's a lot of light up on top here. And some of it's spilling over the edges in kind of a, a light gray. 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 More vehicles coming up the canyon. We're down the canyon, or somewhat way. We have a lot of tourists going up our road this time of year, going to Estes Park, which is about 22 miles up the road. some of these corrections. So let me start over on the blue pile and add some green to it. And some white. It's kind of a greeny blue. Oh, that's nice, right in there. I actually see some junipers up in here. Just trying to get the right balance. I see kind of a strong light coming over here, and less so right here at the edge. And now I'm going to make some thin washes. Thin. And I'm going to take some washes over some of these brighter colors just a few areas, kind of a blue-gray, and it makes it a little bit more related to this side. I don't want to overdo the light. I want to have the right balance for the light, if that makes sense. And I'll use some of this same mixture with a little bit more light in it, having more Titanium. And I'm kind of 
kind of melding the two together. Man, that's a lot of equipment going up the hill. Okay, let's get back. This is a little strong. I'm going to kill it in a few places. That's all it needs. Just a little bit. Says a lot. Well, hello again. I had a brief um, intermission there because I had technical difficulties, but we're going to go ahead and finish the last few minutes of this painting. So let me uh, bring you back to where we were. And that is that I was working in this area right here, lightening it up. And so I am going to show you how to do that. I got some white, I've got some maples, got some transparent oxide red. And I just wanted to try to get some brights up in here. To try to say, well, something's going on back in this area. So let me lighten that just a little bit more. And I want to get a little bit of green in here. So I added some of that Viridian Green plus Transparent Oxide Red. It's a very dull green. What that does is just accents the, the lightness that I wanted to get here. Let me lighten my lights a little bit more. So I have kind of a zigzag in there, I think. So I'm going to continue going around the painting and seeing if I need to make any changes, but boy, I think this has really come out well. I think one of my weak areas is in here. I don't know, I think I'm going to sit on it overnight and uh, take a look at it and see if I need to do anything up in there. Maybe a few darks might help. So I'm going to go blue, ultra blue, transparent oxide brown, transparent oxide brown. Get some darks under here. And see if that'll do some good. And I think that's a little dark in there. Let me get some maples and some light in here. What I'm doing is putting some lights underneath those darks to kind of emphasize the, the edge there. And that has a nice effect. It's a little too orange up here. I'm going to knock some of that down with this green, but I could go for another 30, 40 minutes looking at these little things. And I don't know if it's going to do any good or not, but anyway, I signed it and uh, let's call it the end. All right. You guys have been so brave to follow me for this whole six sessions. I'm so proud of you. And I hope you enjoy your painting as much as I enjoy this one. I've enjoyed the process. Thanks for being with me. All right, I'll see you in the next painting.